ready. So now what we're going to do, if everyone is inside, it gives me the honor to bring this brother up because I'm telling you, you know, uh, email the chief of the city says, and what people, and what we have talked about, you know, sometimes it's always, you heard it in the past, the issue between New York, New Jersey, or New Jersey, New York, or Pennsylvania, and, you know, that we don't work together. You know, I heard it, I heard it all. Yeah. But you, you know, a lot of blessed up with a new day. We work it together. We, thank you. We work it together. We work it together. That's right. Yes, yeah, so look at beautiful. Yes. New, New York, New Jersey, we don't let uh, borders or boundaries right. separate us no more. We're one, we one, we one community. Yes. One family. We mean that. That's the only thing we're going to accept. Right. Nothing else is acceptable. Any, everything is unacceptable. We're going to break those barriers. Yes, you go. We're going to tear down those barriers. Yes. We're going to tear down the wall. Like, yes. you know, so I'm saying this here. We're going to bring him on because. This, this is one of the most hardest working Imam too, Imam Khalil S. Latif. And I've been knowing him over the years, but the last few years I had an opportunity and honor to work with him, with him. And I'm telling you, this brother is where he pushed me. He pushed me. So he's a co-chair. He was a co-chair uh, last year for the, the Mosque KW Ministry. A convention and Ramadan session in Somerset, New Jersey. He's a co-chair for the Ramadan session this year. And he's a co-chair for the convention in Chicago at 10 o'clock. So he needs no introduction. His resume and vow is so long and everything. So you may have forgiven if I don't read it. Come on up. <laughs> Dear beloved Muslims, brothers and sisters, I greet you in the greeting words of peace. Peace be unto you. Assalamu alaikum. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him. We seek His help. We seek His forgiveness. We believe in Him and we depend upon Him. We seek refuge in Him from all evils and the desires of our deeds. Whoever has gotten His guidance from Allah, no one can misguide. But whoever Allah leaves misguided, no one can I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, He is alone and has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is His servant and His messenger. Dear beloved Muslims, again, brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. I would like to begin by reading something from the Holy Quran, Surah 16, Ayah 75-76. Allah sets forth the parable of two men, one a slave under the dominion of another. He has no power of any sort. And the other man on whom we have bestowed goodly favors from ourselves. And he spends thereof freely, privately and publicly. Are the two equal? By no means, praise be to Allah, but most of them understand not. Allah sets forth another parable of two men. One of them dumb with no power of any sort. A wearisome burden is he on his master. Whichever way he is directs, whichever way he directs him, he brings no good. Is such a man equal with one? 
who commands justice. Excuse me. I, 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 I lost that last word. One who commands justice. Um, I'd like to read something from a book, To Be a Slave, by Julius Lester. And these were interviews with former slaves that were done, and they're in the Library of Congress. And the first one I'd like to read was a slave named Sally Crane. And she said, we didn't know nothing like young folks do now. We hardly knowed our names. We was cussed for so many bitches and sons of bitches and bloody bitches and blood of bitches. We never heard our names scarcely at all. First young man I went with wanted to know my initials. What did I know about initials? You ask them 10 years old now, and they'll tell you that was after the war. Initials. Another interview. I was here in slavery days. I was here. When I come here, colored people didn't have their ages. The boss man had them. And the final one I'd like to read from this book was one slave, Charlie Williams. I want to see old master again anyways. I reckon maybe I'll just go up and ask him what he wants me to do. And he'll tell me. And if I don't know how, he'll show me how. And I'll try to do it to please him. And when I get it done, I want to hear him grumble like he used to and say, Charlie, you ain't got no sense, but you's a good boy. This here ain't very good, but it'll do, I reckon. Get yourself a little piece of that brown sugar, but don't let no other niggas see you eating it. If you do, I'll whip your black behind. He goes on to say, that ain't the way it's going to be to be in heaven, I reckon. But I can't sit here and think of no other way I'd better like to have it. <sighs> Up from slavery. Booker T. Washington reported I have always been made sad when I have heard members of any race claiming rights and privileges or certain badges of distinction on the ground simply that they were members of this or that race, regardless of their own individual worth or attainments. I have been made to feel sad for such persons because I am conscious of the fact that mere connection with what is known as a superior race will not permanently carry an individual forward unless he has individual worth. And mere connection with what is regarded as inferior race will not finally hold an individual back if he possesses intrinsic, intrinsic individual merit. Bear with me, I'm going to keep reading some of these quotes. These are from, from our history. Yes. On self-determination, Frederick Douglass. Our destiny is largely in our own hands. If we find, we shall have to see. If we succeed in the race of life, it must be by our own energies and our own exertions. Others may clear the road. But we must go forward or be left behind in the race of life. If we remain poor and dependent, the riches of other men will not avail us. If we are ignorant, the intelligence of other men 